This is the Doghouse Sports Podcast. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. This is the Doghouse Sports Podcast. Um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, welcome to the Doghouse. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Um, we're here. Just uh, going to do a quick little episode here. Um, cap, cap it off. Sorry, I'm just doing something on my computer. All right, we're all good. Um, Lay back. Hey, we, yeah, just we kick were it, you know. had someone, but... Yeah, it's all good. It is what it that is. That plan derailed, but... No, nah, it's okay. It's, uh... Okay, everyone's busy, you know. People, especially when they're overseas, it's, uh... It gets busy, right? And it's hard with the time zone uh, difference, he, but, uh... He's probably going to be watching this. Like, <laughs> yeah. Out. Oh, yeah. He probably will. It's all good. Uh, he... It's all good. We'll, we'll, we'll get it rescheduled for sure. But, uh, yeah, no, we're here. We got some... I had some big news uh, for the week, man. We had uh, got Jake Paul and Tyrone Woodley tonight. I'm gonna watch that. Uh, definitely not paying for that fight because that's that's not worth my money. I'm sorry. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what, Jacob? You know what killed it for me, man? Was um, the Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather fight? Uh, like, remember, I was so hyped up for that fight. That killed me as and, well. And it was it was shit. First of all. Second of all, like I saw a clip after of um, Mayweather laughing, like leaving his press conference saying, I just secured a bag for a fake flight. So no, that, that pissed me off. And I was like, wow. So this was just wow. all. So I was like, whatever. That's fine. I was like, well, hey, that's fine. Hey, whatever. Hey, they're, they're just trying. They're trying to like, you know, make money in the end of the day. And, you know, they sold the they sold the fight and they did a good job at it. Right. But I was like, as a consumer i was like wow okay i i see how it is you know like exactly. but uh i don't know man i don't know how this fight's gonna go tonight yeah me neither i really don't know I it's probably might check it on reddit just uh you know yeah yeah man like again jake paul again he he's he is a good fighter man i don't like people hate him because of his personality but exactly the, guy, the guy's a great boxer like, i also think people hate him because of the quote-unquote team 10 kind of thing yeah yeah like and again he's just hey man he's just living life man he's just the guy the guy's just uh con- like man i don't know how i don't know how to explain it but like this the guy is just uh he's living life to his fullest man he's like boxing he makes money yeah. you know and he's in cali oh my yeah. god yeah man he's just in california i think uh, i think he moved to puerto rico with logan paul though but i don't know for sure don't quote me on that for sure yeah, don't quote but, uh, <laughs> But I yeah. think I know I saw their trading together, but yeah, dude, it's so it's it's pretty awesome though. It's uh it's pretty awesome how like those two like the Paul brothers have really like become like some maybe the biggest entertainers in the world. You know, like with how they're like how big yeah. they've gotten the last maybe two two years. Last year, I think Logan Paul really blew up. He was always really famous, but like popular, but. Yeah, him and Jake together. So especially with Logan Paul's podcast. Oh. Yeah, his podcast is really good. He has like again, he has so many different kinds of people on there, like artists, whatever you name it, right? So I think he also got a Filipino comedian as well. One time. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's had everybody, man. He's had Mike Tyson. He's had like yeah. so many. Uh, yeah, I was a yeah, good interview. Yeah, adult film star. Oh. Yeah, like you name it, like athletes too. He's had everybody. Uh, wait, wait, breaking news, breaking news. What's I that, got Breaking buddy? news for you. Breaking news, what is this? Because Eric Engel, right? Yeah, he, okay. He tweeted, I don't know why, could be a pure coincidence, but Jack Eichel is boarding a plane heading for Montreal right now. No. no. Yes, check it now. No freaking way. I just saw him. Go to Eric Engel. Wait a minute. Yeah. Ho- whoa. Whoa. Holy. God almighty. Wow. I don't, again, that, that can just be. It could be rumors. It could be. It could just be. I mean, but why would you go out of your way? I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, now that. 
That we did not expect. I'm telling He's you. He's bringing his hot. Oh fuck! I didn't realize that second part. He's bringing his hockey. St- oh my. Yeah. Woo! And guess who we created it? Elliot Friedman. Retweeted. Yeah, eh? So if you know Shit. if Elliot Friedman retweeted something, it could be legit. That is crazy. Guys, oh. if you guys aren't watching this, we got breaking news. Oh. Eric, Sunday afternoon bomb. Eric Engels just dropped a bomb on a Sunday afternoon, man. And Holy. It could be rumors. It could be speculation. Who knows? We'll have to see oh, how this turns out. Dude, that's crazy. Nah, dude, I'm like, I don't know what to think of that. Like, holy. What? Dude, when you left, I just saw a notification on my phone. I oh, opened it. It was like, oh. I opened it. It was like, Jack Eichel. It's just weird, though. Why would he be going to Montreal? Dead. Like he's he's from Boston. Like he what is he what business does he have in Montreal? I know. I've never heard of him training here and like not here, but training in Montreal in the off season. I've never heard of anything like that. Like he probably trains in Boston and like Buffalo and wherever the hell he. Imagine that we were talking That's about so... Jake Paul. Wow. And now the Jack Eichel. In two Holy. Seconds. Wow. What? I don't know what to again. I don't know what to think of that. That's crazy though. I know, right? But right. we'll we'll. I just want to give my predictions for the fight, and you could as well, buddy. But yeah. just before we get back into that, because I really want to talk about that now. But um, oh man. Oh, okay. Um, so, so that, I that think derailed our podcast. Yeah, holy fuck! That was good eye, man. Holy shit! Good, good job, buddy. Pulling that up. That was crazy. That's oh, a god. Fuck. Um. Yeah, so I, my predictions, I think Jake Paul wins in three rounds. Yeah, I was going to say three or four. Three or four? Yeah, I think so. I think he could. I don't know. I think he can knock him out because Tyron Woodley hasn't – I don't think he's fought in a while, and he's a UFC fighter. So, I mean, again, Woodley's a tank, though. I've seen his tra- his workout oh. videos and his training videos. The, the buddy, Buddy's a tank, so anything's possible. Wow. But, uh, yeah, let's uh, – Let's fuck it. Uh, let's get right I into the mix totally here. Totally derailed that pot, our podcast. That's um, good though. That's that's like good breaking news because that just like fucking came out. I gotta I gotta fucking send my cousin that. Sorry, man. No, no. no. <laughs> well, don't worry. Well, you're you're cutting this out, right? That, it's crazy. Oh you're my god. Out, right? so. you, you know you know what I think. You know what I think. What? This is probably wishful thinking. It's just an opinion. Again, guys, I'm not an insider for people watching this. This is just opinions. I don't know any insiders. I think, like, I don't know, man. I, I think a trade might be going down. Maybe. Who knows? You might hear something in the next 48 hours. You just might. Who knows? Plus, it, plus if Elias Freeman retweets something, it could be legit. Yeah, I don't know though. It could mean anything though, but like, like I said, it could be rumors, it could be speculation, it could be anything. Just, it could just be like, yeah, just he could just brain for something. I don't know though. That's just like crazy though. Like, I don't again. I don't know what to think. I'm like excited, but I don't want to get too excited because what if you know what I mean? Personally, like at at this point, like I don't really know if a trade's going to happen right now because of the whole problems with, like, Buffalo and he has to get that surgery that he's oh, that eating for. And that surgery. Yeah. yeah, like, it's it's become a whole issue. It's become, like, you know, a whole problem with those two. Both parties, like, want to really just um, move on, right? So. Yeah. And that's why we were talking about four things. Now we're talking about five. Yeah, that's good. No, that's good. Um, personally, like, I would love to see Eichel on Montreal. I've made that known. Like, yeah. I, I think I think anybody would take Jack Eichel on their team. Ah, oh, exactly. Um, take take it away from Buffalo. Yeah, make him laugh. Shit, man! Like, wow. Like, I again, I don't. I'm not really. I I don't want to look to that, but that's like crazy. Like the fact that he'd go out of his way to go to Montreal is just kind of weird. I texted him back, and he was like. So I texted him that thing, 
and he's like, that can mean anything. And he's like, but well, again, again, we'll see what happens, right? So yeah. I just like I, I said, just, it could be anything. But could be anything. It's just that is, that is crazy. My God, Jack Geichel to Montreal confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> is oh. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we got a new insider. Ah, jeez, fucking! I don't even know if like because we're gonna kind of go more into like the next topic. We're gonna talk about Kaka Niemi getting offer sheeted by Carolina. I don't really think they can add him to the trade at this point because uh, once yeah. you sign the offer sheet, like, or like once once the original team matches the offer sheet, you can't trade them after one season. Yeah, so, exactly. so I don't know, man. It's uh, well, no, do they even have enough pick? To... Oh, they do. It's just Montreal actually has the farm, like the the assets to. To give up for Eichel, it's just I don't know if they, like a lot of people are really hesitant to do it. But personally, I think the only person, the only player I would not trade for Eichel is Cole Caulfield and well, Suzuki. Definitely. And Suzuki. But right. again, those are two players that Buffalo probably is gonna want, right? So it's yeah. like, yeah, you they know, but, but the, might want a a high a prospect or oh, for sure. Or? They probably might want to have a prospect and a draft pick for Eichel. Uh, oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. We'll see, though. We'll see, like, I don't know. Yeah, uh, wow. Breaking news. Yeah, yeah. that's weird. It's kind of, that was like a, hold on, I'm just reading. Yeah, Friedman retweeted it. Well, wait. Eric Angles again. One good reason he could be on his way is because Biosteel oh. Camp is down. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. This weekend. Yeah, Biosteel Camp. Yeah, that's true. Well, I don't know. To our two people uh, that are listening to that news, you can uh, think whatever you want about it. So Yeah. It could you be can a think totally whatever you want. Anything. God. It could be totally anything. I don't really know if like trade's going to happen. It could. Again, you just never know. But... Wow. Still, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a ah oh man. The thing is with Buffalo, they really have to lower their asking price though. Yeah, a lot of teams are unwilling to give up assets for that. And again, a guy that's getting a surgery that no other NHL player has gotten, and you don't know how he's going to be after he he can just complete go into complete total decline, right? So it's kind of a liability in some ways, right? So, and let's let's not forget Buffalo don't have their whole scouting staff as well. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a tough situation though. Like I don't know how they can, I don't know. I I feel like both sides have really kind of put themselves in this hole. So I mean, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I mean, it could. I be really bio, don't know. It could be bio steel camp. It could be a trade. Who knows? It could be a trade, or it could just be training or whatever, right? So. I don't know though, man. It's wow, what a, excuse what me. A I don't know. Bombshell on a Sunday afternoon, eh? Yeah, fucking Eric Eric Engels, man. We'll see though. Um, trying to pull their yeah. heart. Trying to pull Montreal Canadiens fans' heartstrings. Yeah, um, I don't know. Seriously, those fucking Montreal insiders love doing that. They love it. They love it. Uh, yeah, but man, I want to kind of go into the Kotkaniemi uh, offer sheet yesterday. <laughs> Kind of sliding into that discussion, but man, that was, I was, um, I was out yesterday and like I was just turn on my phone for a bit, turn on my data, and I got a headline, I got a notification from TSN saying the Canes, Carolina Hurricanes have offer sheeted just Barry Kotkaniemi. I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me! I know, right? They're they're really going down this rabbit hole. I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me! I, yeah. I thought it was hilarious though. That just I just laughed right away. Cause like they're like Carolina man, like such a petty organization. I know, right? But at the same time, on Kotkaniemi K- side, like, hey, if someone's offering me six point one million dollars, I don't and give a plus, fuck. Fuck loyalty, I'm is, signing it. Plus, opportunity is rare these days. Yeah, it's hard because it used to happen a lot back then. Like you know. Or like the late 2000s and kind of like the early 2010s, it happened a few times. Like you had like in 07, you had, uh, um, yeah, like 
it, you had like Kevin, um, Kevin Lowe and Brian Burke almost fought in a barn once over uh-huh. Dustin Penner. I heard as well. Yeah, then Dustin Penner back in 2007. You had Shea Weber with the Flyers when the Flyers offered Shea Weber that crazy contract and he signed it. You had Ryan O'Reilly like a few months after. Uh, Calgary offer sheeted Ryan O'Reilly. He signed it and Colorado matched it. Uh, and haven't seen any really for a while. Uh, then you had Sebastian uh, Aho. He offer sheeted one year, maybe? What's that? Sorry. I think the offer sheet is like one year. Yeah, for for, for KK, yeah, it's one year, 6.1 mil. Yeah. So it's, I mean, I don't know. It, it was really like, I've seen a lot of opinions on, like uh, because obviously like Hockey Twitter, Habs Twitter was blowing up like last oh, night. I, I bet it oh, is. Dude. Oh, dude, it was blowing up. And there was a lot of mixed emotions. And like one thing I don't get is like, okay, there was people that were like riding him and like Kotkaniemi. And they're like, oh, I love Kotkaniemi. And then they, he signs the offer sheet and they're like, oh, oh fuck him. And it's like, dude, like he, it's a business at the end of the day. Like, yeah, like whatever. It sucks. But like, hey, he's he's trying to look out for himself. He doesn't care. Like, hey a business if he's try if he wants to make more money then go for it you know All right. what's the big deal like that's that's the thing like and I, I said this too earlier i was like okay like if you got a job offer from another company that paid you way more than what you're making now you're obviously not going to turn it down to be loyal to your shitty job that pays you less money right like unless you're really happy there which i mean we're us regular people are in different situations than athletes, right? But like, you know, I mean, you're always trying to strive for better, right? And same with him. He, he there, that's a good opportunity for him. He makes six million dollars a year for a guy, uh, and is going into his fourth season. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, man. It's like you know, when I looked at uh, Cap Friendly. Yeah. So for draft pick for compensation, if it's yeah. if it's Four point one to six point one. Yeah. A first and a third. If yeah, it's more first. than six point one, then it's a first, a second, a third, and then oh. two, two first, a second, and a third. And then wow. after that, if it's more than ten, it's four first round picks. Holy shit! Yeah, you really got to pony up though if if you're gonna offer sheet a guy. You really yeah. got to fucking pony up. Like, it's risky as fuck. So, like, basically, uh, if it's, like, 1 to 1.3, they don't get anything. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, if it's a small contract, which never really happens, uh, usually, you know, the team's offer sheet, or it's a little bit bigger. But, yeah, man, I don't know. Like, part of me says, like, I don't want to lose Kotkaniemi because I'm afraid, like, he's going to go to Carolina and he's just going to blossom and he's going to become a superstar. Yeah. I'm really scared about that. Right. And then he, then they, uh, they, they sign him to an extension, <clears throat> excuse me, midway through the season. Right. Or whatever. Right. Like I, Carolina would probably go crazy like that, but like, yeah. And then we have a hole down the middle. Right. Yeah. So it's like, fuck man. And now like I heard, I heard something from one of the French, uh, insiders, uh, Ronald Lavoie. Um, something about like people close to Kotkin Yemi said that apparently like they thought he played his last game in Montreal, uh, in the finals because he got, he got, uh, benched in the finals. He was a healthy scratch and he apparently wasn't happy. So I don't know if that's true. It's just like, again, it's all speculation, right? There's not really any yeah. traction on this. It's just weird though, that it's three weeks, three weeks away from training camp. And one of your, I mean, Jesus, you drafted this guy third overall and uh, to that, like three years ago. And, you know, he's supposed to be one of the centerpieces of your franchise and uh, he's still not signed yet. It's just, it's just weird, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. And like, it's for, just for really 2022, sketchy. Yeah. Carolina got a first, a second, two third, a fourth, a fifth, two six and two sevens. For what? Sorry, what's that for? For 2022 draft. For 2010, oh. 2022 draft. So. I see. Okay. They're basically loading up on draft picks. Ah, okay. Yeah, so even like... Hey, even if like they were to offer 
Babcock and Yemi Moore, they could probably pony up the draft picks because yeah, exactly. they have they have a lot of them. So, yeah, man, that was like a complete shockwave that was sent like in the fuck, man, in like the hockey like Habs Twitter world. Fuck, dude. Yeah. And yeah. you know it was so it, like Carolina is so petty for what they did. Like, dude, they Don Waddell word by word said the exact same thing that Bergevin did when they when they offer sheeted uh, offer sheeted Sebastian Aho nice. like the exact same word dude. by word like it's i'm like dude it's basically that is so crazy it's basically like a student trying to copy off a, another student on a test oh carol the hurricanes are that crazy ex that just uh, hasn't moved on i that's what it is <laughs> The Carolina Hurricanes are that crazy ex-girlfriend or boyfriend that just hasn't moved on. That's what, that's what they are. By the way, can I also say, sorry to get off track. Oh, that's cool, man. But for Jack Eichel, yeah. my Jack Canadians are getting blue balls right now. Oh, fuck, are they ever. The fans are. Oh, fuck. So, I'm going to say, for Elliot Freeman tweeted out, Eichel will be attending the Battlefield Sports Camp yeah. without playing in the game. Participation will be off ice yeah so he's probably just going there for the thing but still like that kind of gets your gets your gears going right so i know right like oh again everyone's allowed to have an opinion on that whatever you think is gonna happen whatever you guys think put in the comments whatever you think you go ahead man or even just to yourself what you think you want to like that can just again that's just a open-minded discussion in that sense um it's just he's probably just going there for that that bio steel camp and yeah hey but you never know maybe they might maybe Bergevin might come talk to him oh, maybe oh, you just man. never know you just never know oh, 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 oh. yeah honestly, that's though, hot waters wow that would be nice though fuck man could it be uh, campering though? that's the question what's that could it be campering though that's the question no, not even so. Like, well, you you'd have to just to talk to him, and be like, "Hey, man, what's going on?" You know, like, good to have you in the city. Kind of like, be persuasive with them, right? And kind of maybe you know, speak. You know, you know what I mean. Like, it's like yeah, you're yeah, trying to sell something. Yeah, like I mean, it's not like he's a free. Like, well, if he was a free agent, it wouldn't yeah, be a big it could, deal. It could be tampering. Yeah, or or maybe no, I wouldn't be tampering if like if it was before like the off season or something. That's that would be tampering. It would, yeah. He'd probably be like, hey, man, like, probably put his arm around his shoulder. He's like, hey, Jack, uh, what do you think of Montreal? You know, he probably, he's probably, probably would do that. I can see Bergevin being pretty, like, persuasive and, like, so he'd be like, what do you Jack? think of Montreal? What, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Jack. Montreal is I great would never, <laughs> I would never thought of Jack like going to Montreal for a camp. You know, it's crazy. Like, I saw this report, like, years ago. But um, I, he said he grew up a Montreal fan. He actually said it. Like, yeah, he's like, I like the Habs growing up. Being in Boston, uh, I, I like both. But, like, I like the Habs more. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh. Now, I that's going to be a heated debate in the Eichel family. Oh, I bet. I bet. But, uh, yeah, man, that's, that's going to be crazy. Personally, though, I think... Kakanyemi becomes a Carolina Hurricane by the end of the week. Uh, next Saturday, I think. Well, it's seven days, right? So, yeah. seven days to sign it. I think he becomes a Carolina Hurricane and uh, unfortunately leaves a hole down the middle for Montreal. Um, it's it's going to suck, but, like, man, $6.1 is a lot for... And, again, I love KK, but he hasn't proved yet that he's worth that kind of money, you know? I know it's only on a one-year deal, but... You know what uh, I mean? That's a uh, tough one. But hey, at least, you guys tough one. Dra- at least you guys are getting draft picks back. Yeah, I'm okay with that. And then we can use that. What I was saying earlier is because Carolina is, you know, a playoff contender now. So a lot of their draft picks are going to be late picks. Their first rounder is probably, it's probably going to be a late pick. So I would say move that first and third rounder. <laughs> For like a center, if you lose Kaka Yeah. You exactly. know, like I heard a hey, going back to Jack Eichel for a second, I heard a rumor on Twitter that apparently Buffalo was offered a deal by Calgary, like Sean Monahan, 
um, a prospect. I can't remember who, and like a couple of draft picks, and then what? Uh, like a prospect, like two prospects, Monahan, I think it was, and like a draft, and like a couple of draft picks, and they still said no. So I mean, wow. Buffalo's really got to like be a little bit more realistic right now, and you got to realize like, man, I don't like. What do you get for him? Like that that's what they gotta think about. Like, what are you gonna get for him? Like yeah. you gotta you gotta be more real, right? You gotta be realistic and be like, Okay, I can get this for him, we can get this for him, but we can't teams aren't willing to give up like Yeah. It, it's a really tough situation. I think both Eichel and the Sabres have put themselves in that hole. Uh Eichel's fed up, he wants to leave, he can't leave. Uh yeah. Sabres, I mean like, well, you know, it's whatever. It is what it is. We'll see what happens. I don't even know what's so, going to happen there. Fuck. For KK, yeah, you guys don't even have cap space left. We don't. That's the thing, right? And you got to create cap the space. Only, the only thing you guys have, left, like, used is the LTIR, like, space. Yeah, I know. And and you guys got, like, what, 2.276? Yeah, it's... Like, yeah. Um, yeah, well, Weber's on the LTIR. He's probably not. He's probably not coming back, right? So they yeah. used all their cap space. They used all their cap space um, in the uh, what do you call it for signing Hoffman and Savard. They used a lot of the cap space they freed up by you know letting go of some guys, letting go of Philip Deneau. Uh, yeah, which I'm I was okay with that, but. Uh yeah no the Habs have had like a really weird off season it's it's been good in some ways but really bad in a lot so we'll right see what now, happens this so, year yeah basically the most like cap space you guys use is on defense yeah well we need yeah we needed help on defense so on D it's like what so. twenty twenty point two four million on D yeah well they David Savard was good so I'm happy they signed Savard for a pretty team friendly contract. Yeah. But uh yeah, we'll see how that goes. He's not gonna be Shea Weber, but he'll still be pretty good, I think. And I think some of them are signed to like uh no movement, no trade, like minimum. Yeah, and again Carey Price's contract uh, is tying up the cap too. So it, it's you know what? Hey, they they're it's not a bad team, but man, losing yeah. KK would suck, but it's just a really shitty circumstance. Apparently they weren't even close on contract talks either. Another thing I heard too. So, right? I think, yeah. Uh, no, no, Weber man. is not. Weber is not the only guy that's on LTIR, like injured reserve. Yeah. Paul Ooh. Byron is on injured reserve. Yeah, Paul Byron's gonna be on there till like January. So, so yeah. Uh, A couple of guys. Yeah. By- Byron was good. He played uh, good. Not in the only that, you guys got Carl Osner buyout as well. Yeah, that was a terrible contract yeah. oh, i hated it from the s- second i heard it it happened it was a desperation move though because um the ha- like Mar- bergevin lost andre markov that off season and yeah. it was you know it was a desperation move so um they st- honestly man losing markov was a really really fucking bad thing to happen to the team that's when they kind of started to decline was when Markov left. So he's he's retired from hockey now as a whole. So he played the rest of his career in the KHL and then yeah, I think he he hung him up last year. So yeah, he was awesome though. I don't know how you guys are gonna get all that contract out of here. Yeah, we'll see what happens though. But um man, that's 6. crazy. Six point one, wow. Yeah, I know. That's I have a feeling, like I said, I don't think they're going to match it. I think he's good as gone. Yeah, especially with the cap space. They yeah, they don't have they don't yeah. have it. And it's just also like KK, I think, is a little bit pissed at the team, right, for the finals from what I've been hearing, right, what I've yeah. been seeing on Twitter. I don't know if it's true. Again, these are just insiders could, tweeting them. So Darren Dreger be, tweeted it. It could be speculation. It could be rumors. It could be anything. Well, speculation and rumors are the same thing, but (laughs) (laughs) anyways, um, yeah. So you wanted to talk about this, but I haven't really been following it. I've been just been so busy, but, uh, yeah, the team Canada, there's like the women's tournament or something. Um, yeah. yeah. It's like the double IH of like women's world championship. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. 
You've been playing good, Team Canada, eh? Oh, I'm telling you, they're like, they're phenomenal. They basically, they're totally in the semifinals right now. They basically beat, like, totally dominated Germany, like, 7 nice. nothing. Oh, so. beauty. Yeah, they're, they, again, Canada's women's team has always been good. Uh, I One thing I did see, I think um, Marie-Philippe uh, Poulin, I think he, she's on the team. She's the captain still. Yeah. So that's uh, that's pretty good. I like her. She's a good player. Um, Especially with the Russian, like, with the Russian Olympic, the Golden Goal. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That was unreal. I still remember that, like, to this day. It was unreal. Yeah, man. I... I good for them, you know. I hope they I hope they take it all this year, you know. Like, geez. Yeah. Keep on adding to our greatness, you know, our hockey greatness. So and, uh, right now the semifinals is US versus Finland. Yeah. And then Canada versus Switzerland. Oh wow. Switzerland. Wow. Switzerland's up there. Oh yeah. Switzerland. I did see it on Sports Center. Switzerland did upset Russia yesterday. I was pretty happy about that. Because yeah. I'm sorry, I do not like Russia. <laughs> I do not like their hockey team. I've never have. I've always disliked them. But yeah, to be honest, I think it's going to be a typical U.S. versus Canada. More but, than likely, unless you see an upset. But you just never know, right? Because it's been like a rivalry for the centuries, no matter what. Like, yeah. It, it. I mean, yeah. Because this is the thing I don't really like. I mean, I don't this i'm not trying to sound like an asshole here like why i don't really watch women's hockey like don't get offended by this but like it's just because again it's always canada and us in the finals it's always the same teams like yeah. i used to like it when i was younger and again it was always canada us and it's like it's the same teams all the time like what's the like personally for yeah. me like i got bored of it i don't mean this in any way or any disrespectful way at all they, those those girls can really play and I'm not taking that away from them. It's just like the way, because, you know, it's just they're the two best teams, right? And that's it. So yeah. it's just, it's always the same thing, right? That's kind of why I, I got sick of like, you know, watching Serie A and like a lot of these these cl league clubs in uh, Europe and soccer, right? Because it's always the same teams that are dominating and winning every year, right? So, yeah. To be honest, yeah. I think like a game that Canada and US are playing. I yeah. think they're basically like warm-ups game for the finals. Yeah, for real. It, seriously, though, like a lot of them, yeah. Like it just kind of like gets them going and, you know, especially in the World Juniors, though, when you see like um, in the World Juniors, when you um, when you see like, again, Canada plays like the first game on Boxing Day and – they like play like fucking Germany or fucking Switzerland and they get and they just light them up like nine nothing, right? Oh. Or one of these like Belarus or something, one of these like random teams, right? And they get lit up like nine nothing and it's like holy shit, right? Those games are yeah, those games are just kinda like, you know, getting them warmed up, you know? So Especially against like especially with Canada versus Germany, like yesterday. It was like yeah. seven nothing. Yeah. Although, like, I know for the men's team though, Germany's actually not bad now. They've they've actually really come a long way, and they actually have some really good players. Like, even the World Juniors, like they played pretty well in the World Juniors this past year. Um, you know, with Tim Stutzel, and there was like a couple other guys, and then there's oh, Moritz Sizer is good too. Like, they have good players. Germany's actually starting to develop like the good hockey players. Uh, and you got Dreisaitl too in the in the NHL there, and Stutzel again. Stutzel is going to be amazing. So yeah, Ger Ger watch out for Germany in the future for for like the Olympics yeah. and stuff for hockey. Like I'm going to be hockey. honest for women's hockey. I'm all for the rivalries, but having Canada and US like back to back to back to back to back. That's that's the point. That's what I'm trying to say yeah. too. It's like why like again like I don't mean this in a bad way. It's just I don't really tune in anymore because it's always the same thing and it's always canada winning and it's like oh it's, it gets boring right like it's not it's it's not boring like the hockey's good it's just like the outcomes are always the same and again i don't mean that in any disrespectful way again like those those girls well, can really well, play the warning we don't no, whatever no, whatever we like, discuss here it's only our opinion so. yeah 
No, and again, like I mean this, I'm trying to, I'm saying this in the most respectful way possible, but just nothing against their skill set. They they can probably they can skate circles around me and like dangle me <laughs> left and right, right? So that's the thing. So I'm it's nothing against their skill set. It's just again, it's always the same teams and skate you know, around. Right. What, you did, know. what did you say? Same. It's all skate circles around me and just like dangle left and right. I'd, I'd be looking at the puck. So yeah. They, they, um, yeah, no, it's nothing against them. Uh, yeah. I try all like for international, I, 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 it's kind of my, my, my way, but like I try to tune, tune into the odd like CWHL game, you know, there's Canadians women talking uh, league. I, yeah. I try to tune into a game or two, like, you know, to be honest, it's all, now it's the NWHL and the or NWHL. Sorry, I thought it was CWHL. Well, dang, it used, it used to be. Used to be, yeah. Sorry, so yeah, NWHL, yeah. I try to tune in every so often, but yeah. I, don't know. I think they, they also hosted their game on Twitch as well, so. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Yeah, like, it's fun. It's just, like, again, it's always the same outcomes for the international ones. So, I, again, it gets boring, and again, no offense, no offense to anybody, so. Yeah, no offense to anybody, but, yeah. hey, imagine if it's Canada versus Finland or... U.S. versus Switzerland. Yeah, yeah, like that's the thing, right? Like it's, I've I've really only seen for like Canada, U.S. and I love it, but like you know the rivalry. But it's like sometimes I want to see you know Canada face another team, you know, like Finland, you like you said, or you know even Russia, or you know what I mean, well, like yeah, well, Russia, d- good luck. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's still good hockey though. Nonetheless, it's still great yeah, hockey. It's Again, those girls can really play. Well, yeah. yeah, so good good for them, though. Shout out to the Canadian women's uh, hockey exactly. team there. Um, yeah, you guys are kicking ass, and uh, yeah, keep on getting her going. So, uh, we'll, yeah, we're going to hop into one more topic here, and it's been the craziest offseason for European soccer I think I've ever seen in my oh, life. Nike. Um, so you had the two, the two biggest players in – European soccer that were that were trans uh, moved teams. Oh, and, I, I, people I mean, they, they transferred. Transferred, yeah, sure. That's the proper way to say it. Um, <laughs> I mean, per, like I mean, Ronaldo's moved a few times. Yeah, but Messi's obviously been with Barcelona since he was like 17, 16, right? So, yeah, even younger. So um, that's the thing. It was just weird. Like it was crazy seeing Messi leave. And now you have um, Ronaldo going to man back to Man United. My buddy, that's a Man United fan. Shout out to Justin if you're watching. But uh, hey, Justin, yeah, he's a big, uh, big Man United guy. So he was pretty stoked. We were talking about that the other day. So, um, yeah, man, it was it was pretty cool. It, it it was cool to see Ronaldo go back to Man United. Man, he he played really good there before. Yeah, and uh, when he obviously is beginning of his career, right? And uh, well, yeah, basically, you went from Sporting CPB to Sporting CP and then Man United, yeah, and then Barca and then Juve, and now back to no, what do you mean, Barca? Are you talking about Messi? Oh, Barca, sorry, fuck. Uh, Real Madrid, I'm sorry, Jesus, yeah, God, talk about dude, uh, you're gonna, dude, you're gonna spend all the Real, Real Madrid fans, okay? So okay, I'll, I'll fight them all, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bandwagons, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Real Madrid's a sick team. Don't, yeah. don't get, don't get offended now. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it was cool, man. It was cool to see some movement, especially for those kind of caliber players, right? The two greatest players of our, you know, our our generation, more or less, right? Because yeah, you know, we, we were younger growing up with Messi and Ronaldo, and uh, yeah, no, it's and a lot of kids, you know. A lot of kids seen them growing up, but yeah, man, it, it was really cool to see him go back to Man United, man. I think honestly, like BPL is gonna like really be fun this year. Um, you, you, again, because Man United's been kind of like on a bit of a downwards trend since uh, Sir Alex Ferguson left, right? Yeah. I mean, they're still good teams, but like you know, not as you know contenders they used to be at times. Um. You know, and now you get to see a player like Ronaldo go back there, and maybe he can turn that team around. Uh, he, I mean, Man United hasn't been terrible lately. They, they, they've been getting better, but there was like a few seasons after uh, Alex, Sir Alex Ferguson left that they were pretty tough. So, 
Yeah, man. It, uh, this Fever these, 22 card is going to be false oh, market. Oh, buddy, like that. Like that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be nuts, though. Um, even just Champions League now, you think about it, like, that just changes the whole dynamic of Champions League now because now you're probably going to have... Well, PSG is in regardless, but... Yeah, in regardless, no matter what. Yeah, Juve- Juventus is still good. It's just losing Cristiano is pretty bad for them, but... They can use, but you know what though? They can use that money now to like really like build a good team too, like like a team that can actually win Champions League now. Like so, you know, like it, that's that's the one thing though about you know um, for everyone watching here too. Like a lot of teams that sell, they're like you know franchise players or whatever, right? So yeah, it, it's it's never a bad thing. Like look at here's an example that I got was when. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur when they sold Gareth Bale to oh. Real Madrid back in 2013 for that record like transfer right and Tottenham I'm pretty sure they won like the EPL like a couple years after that and they've had good teams since yeah I think they went back was it back to back or was it yeah something crazy like that and like that's the thing right you can you sell one player and you could get ridiculous money and look, look, look what they built the team with. Right. So that, that's the one thing I've always thought about it when like, you know, you lose a guy like that, you, you, you make so much money, like, you know, you can use all that money, the transfer fee to build such a fantastic team. Like you can literally build a whole team like with what, I don't know what the money was, the transfer fee was for Ronaldo. I don't know. I'm going to look into that right now. Yeah. I'm going to look into that as well. I don't know. Uh, it was probably a lot, though. I would have fuck. I would assume. I know the one in 2010 that was from Man United to uh, Real Madrid was pretty huge. Yep. Uh... Oh shit. Uh... I don't know. Let me see. Million do- oh, that's it? 18 million? That's it? Wow. That's it, eh? I thought they would have uh-huh. gotten more. I thought they would have gotten more for him. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too as well. Yeah, I mean, he is kind of near the end of... He, like, Ronaldo's getting up there in age, too. So, I mean, still, like, that's still a big addition, though. But 18, that's it, though. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> None of them. Messi signed two year with PSG. Yeah, yeah, uh, man. I'm actually pretty. Again, I'm pretty excited for Champions League this year. I think I'm actually gonna start watching the games again because the fact that those guys are gonna be on new teams and like really, um, you know, like getting it done there. Fuck, dude, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be really, really fun. So, yeah, I don't know, man. It's it's gonna be good. I'm pretty stoked. I might even, again, might even catch some EPL games with um, Man United there. I want to see Ronaldo play. I'm not going to lie. I'm really, I really am stoked to see what he's going to do. Whew. But yeah. Yeah. yeah do you have Dazzin for uh, soccer? So you can watch it on it? What's that? You know Dazone, right? For... Yeah, yeah. Oh, I have Dazzin. Yeah, Dazone. Yeah, I have it. I use it for football, though, for, like, NFL games. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's usually what I use it for. But I think I might use it for soccer now, yeah. I mean, yeah. Sportsnet and TSN show all, like, the the Man United games pretty much. Like, they pretty much show them all. So, probably watch that a little bit. The only, not the only that, league... Not only no. that, Michael Jordan also is making, making a lot of money because of the transfer. How come? From what I saw, I don't know. I just saw a new. I saw oh. like a news article. Yeah. And it was like Michael Jordan is already making a lot of money off of Leo Messi move to PSG. Oh, you know why? Okay, I know why. Because the PSG jerseys are Jordan branded, right? And then people are buying yeah, the jerseys, yeah. right? So, oh yeah, he's making a shit ton for sure. I was thinking of grabbing one, but I don't know. We'll see uh, oh. down the road. <laughs> Like, He's wearing grabbing like a, grabbing a grabbing a like PSG jersey, and it's um, like basically 
Kibo, my Jacksonville yeah. Jaguar jersey, it's only there to make money. Yeah, I was. Oh man, I'm. Tebow got released by Jacksonville. I don't know if we actually talked about that on the show, but he got released by Jacksonville like last week. And uh, yeah, I want to see. His, I want to get his jersey though. I still. Yeah, it might be on clearance. Let me look this shit up actually, because I might get a Tebow Jacksonville jersey down the road <laughs> just for shame. <laughs> Honestly, though, like, I like Tim Tebow, man. Like, I liked him when he was on Denver. Like, I just like his, him as a person, you know? Just, he's a good dude. Yeah, exactly. Like, Especially with his Christian faith and stuff. Yeah, man. Like, he's, like, I've never, I don't think that guy's ever, like, used a swear word in his life. Like, he is, like, like the most goody two-shoes, like, person I think I've ever seen. Like, he, he's, like, such an awesome dude. Not only that, he, he was... Still- what people doesn't know is yeah. Kibo was actually born in the Philippines. So. Yeah, he was. Yeah, that's right. He was born in the Philippines. Yes, sir. Let's not forget about that. So, yeah. I mean, they're very spiritual in the Philippines, too. So that's maybe that's... Uh, if, you ha- if you guys haven't known, yeah. You can yeah. Get- Let's not forget about that, man. Gotta love Tebow, though. It's pretty yeah. awesome. Especially I don't know T-Bowing. what he's going to do. Yeah. I remember that trend was going on. That was pretty cool. But honestly, man, like, I don't know what's going to happen with him now. Like, he's, like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. That's, that's, that's tough. Yeah, I think he's cooked, man. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do, bro. I really don't know. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens there. But, uh. Anyways, guys, uh, I think this is gonna cap it off for today. We're we're at about forty-seven minutes. Um, well, yeah, but yeah, what a way to start an episode with that bombshell! Oh, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. It was a pretty big bombshell. I think kind of got everyone going at first, but now I think it, everyone knows it's just for got me going. As you saw, I was pretty fired. <laughs> I, I can tell it got you going. Yeah, man, I'd love to see a trade, but we'll see. I don't think I don't know. That's a, one of those things you can just think whatever you want and then kind of just go from there. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You know, the same old. Check out our Instagram, Twitter, check out whatever. Our, if you guys haven't yet, check out our SoundCloud as well. Or, yeah. Yeah, we we're trying to upload some stuff here. Um, excuse me. Oh, my God. I've been burping all fucking day. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh yeah, it's been pretty good. Uh yeah. I definitely would like to do some in person episodes eventually. It's just planning it and like where are we gonna do it, you know? Because like my my basement's not fixed and it looks like fucking like it doesn't look like ass, so don't get me wrong. We we put a lot of work into this basement, but like to do like recording down here would be pretty tough. So I don't know. It's good for like what we're doing right now, but We'll see, right? Who knows? We'll see down the road. And also, yeah. guys, tune into our Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, or Twitter. Snapchat. We have, we oh. have a couple guests going on. Okay. Yeah, we're trying to we're trying to get some stuff going. We're trying to get some people in the mix, but uh, yeah, it should be good, man. Uh, again, thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, well, thanks for coming to the doghouse, and uh, we will see you later.